Hello everyone, today's journal review is on evaluating transfusion strategies in anemic patients with acute myocardial infarction, the myocardial ischemia and transfusion, MINT, trial. The research problem is, anemia is a prevalent complication in patients with AMI. However, the appropriate threshold for red cell transfusion in these patients is controversial due to the limited and inconsistent evidence from prior trials. The need to balance improved oxygen delivery against potential risks such as fluid overload, infection, thrombosis, and inflammation poses a significant challenge to clinical decision-making. Review of past papers, previous randomized trials totaling 820 patients provided conflicting evidence on transfusion thresholds in AMI patients. The largest among these demonstrated the non-inferiority of a restrictive transfusion strategy versus a liberal strategy regarding major adverse cardiac events at 30-day follow-up. A comprehensive analysis of over 21,433 patients revealed a 50% reduction in blood usage under a restrictive strategy without impacting morbidity and mortality rates. Current guidelines acknowledge the gap in clinical trial data for transfusion in the myocardial infarction patient subgroup, indicating a demand for more research. The hypothesis for the MINT trial could be framed as follows. A restrictive transfusion strategy, hemoglobin threshold of 7 to 8 grams per deciliter, is associated with either a reduced risk of death or myocardial reinfarction within 30 days compared with a liberal transfusion strategy hemoglobin threshold of less than 10 grams per deciliter, in anemic patients with AMI. The methodology of the trial. Trial design and oversight, conducted at 144 sites across six countries. Open label, randomized trial with prior published rationale and design. Trial protocol XC approved by relevant committees, patients, surrogates gave consent. Led by various committees, including clinical and data coordinating centers, and oversight from the NHLBI. Manuscript written by the first two authors who vouch for data integrity and protocol fidelity. Data and safety monitored every six months with annual interim efficacy analyses. Trial population. Enrolled adults with saint segment elevation or non-street segment elevation myocardial infarction and anemia. Inclusion based on the third universal definition of myocardial infarction with hemoglobin less than 10 grams per deciliter. Exclusion for uncontrolled bleeding, palliative treatment, scheduled cardiac surgery, or blood transfusion refusal. Randomization procedures. One-to-one -one random assignment to restrictive or liberal transfusion strategies using a web-based system with permuted blocks, stratified by site. Independent statistician at Data Coordinating Center generated the sequence. Transfusion strategies. Restrictive group. Transfusion recommended under 7 grams per deciliter hemoglobin or uncontrolled angina. Permitted under 8 grams per deciliter. Liberal group. Maintain hemoglobin is greater than or equal to 10 grams per deciliter until hospital discharge or for 30 days. Protocol allows for clinical judgment adjustments, single-unit transfusions with post-transfusion hemoglobin checks. Outcomes. Primary outcome. Composite of myocardial infarction or death within 30 days. Death confirmed by medical records and follow-up with myocardial infarction adjudicated by a blinded committee. Secondary outcomes included individual primary outcome components and other ischemic cardiac conditions. The results are. Patients. Enrolled 3,506 patients, 3,504 included in the analysis, mean age 72.1 years, 45.5% women. High prevalence of coexisting conditions such as previous myocardial infarctions, interventions, heart failure, and renal insufficiency. Majority had type 2 myocardial infarction, mean hemoglobin 8.6 grams per deciliter, median creatinine 1.4 milligrams per deciliter. Follow-up completed for 98.3% of participants at 30 days. Implementation of assigned interventions. Restrictive group had a lower mean hemoglobin level than the liberal group on days 1 and 3 post-randomization. Liberal strategy used 3.5 times more red cell units than the restrictive strategy. Similar median hospital stay of 5 days for both groups. Protocol discontinued in 2.6% of the restrictive group and 13.7% of the liberal group, mainly for clinical reasons. Trial outcomes. 
Primary outcome, myocardial infarction or death, occurred in 16.9% of the restrictive group and 14.5% of the liberal group. Risk ratio, restrictive versus liberal, was 1.16, suggesting a higher risk with the restrictive strategy, but not statistically significant, p equals 0.07. Death rate was 9.9%, restrictive, versus 8.3%, liberal, myocardial infarction rates were 8.5% versus 7.2%, respectively. No significant difference in the risk of heart failure between strategies, but restrictive group had fewer TACO events. Pulmonary embolism or DVT and transfusion reactions were infrequent and not significantly different between groups. Subgroup analyses. Consistent effects of the restrictive strategy across pre-specified subgroups. Restrictive strategy associated with more events in type 1 myocardial infarction but not in type 2. No significant differences in primary outcomes based on type 2 myocardial infarction between the strategies. Main findings. The MINT trial found no significant difference in the risk of recurrent myocardial infarction or death at 30 days between restrictive and liberal transfusion strategies. Liberal strategy favored in point estimates for primary outcome, death, and composite outcomes but not conclusively superior. Similar safety outcomes in both transfusion groups, with frequency of heart failure and other adverse events being comparable. Comparison with previous trials. Contrast with prior studies which suggested benefits of restrictive strategies in other patient groups and settings. Previous trials with acute myocardial infarction patients indicated cost benefits and non-inferior clinical outcomes with restrictive strategies, although these findings were not consistently superior to liberal strategies. Study implications. The smaller than expected difference in primary outcomes may be due to the heterogeneity of patient groups, including many with demand ischemia, type 2 myocardial infarction. The trial's pragmatic design aimed for broad generalizability across diverse older patient populations with coexisting conditions. Inclusion criteria may have selected patients with increased severity of illness, potentially impacting the efficacy of liberal transfusion strategies. Strengths of the trial, pragmatic design, representative of a clinical setting with a variety of myocardial infarction diagnoses and coexisting illnesses. High follow-up completion rate for primary outcomes and central, blinded adjudication for myocardial infarction events. Limitations of the trial. Lack of blinding for the assigned interventions may have influenced treatment and outcome classification. Cardiac cause of death not centrally adjudicated. Moderately strict adherence to transfusion protocols with clinical discretion influencing protocol adherence. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, click the subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a beat. Join our community to stay up to date with our latest videos, and share your thoughts in the comments below. We love hearing from you, and your support means we can keep bringing you more of the content you love. Subscribe now and become part of our growing family. Clinical Decision Implications the results support the consideration of a liberal transfusion strategy given the low risk and potential benefits indicated by the trial's endpoints. However, results are not definitive, and further research is needed to provide clear guidance on transfusion strategies in acute myocardial infarction patients with anemia. Thank you.